Howdy folks, earlier this month I started recording a video on one-to-one -one time. If you're not familiar with it, it's a rule written by Gary Gygax back in the heyday of AD&D. All it states is for every day that passes in real life between game sessions, one day passes in game. So if you play on Monday, you don't play again until next Monday, seven days will have happened, progressed, in your game in that time. But the video is not finished yet, it, there's still editing to be done, there's still animations to be commissioned, music to be added. So I figured I'd drop this preview instead. Now if you enjoy it, I hope you do, go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon so you can be notified when the full video drops. And without further ado, here you are. So if y'all go online and ask folks about one-to-one -one time, you'll hear from a corner of old school players, the rule only works with large groups. It doesn't benefit small groups, just waste time, and generally serves as an inconvenience. I'm here to tell you haven't tested it, this is not the case. Making one day pass in the game for every day that passes in real life offers three benefits unique to smaller groups. I'm going to list them out here for you. First on the docket is the unique fail state. The party has a unique fail state with regards to time sensitive goals. Just because the party isn't competing with other player characters doesn't mean the world takes a pause. Players are competing with NPCs. Somewhere out there is a big bad evil guy. Is he waiting on the players to come kick his ass? Of course not. Who would want to play in a campaign like that? He is out there in the world achieving his own time sensitive goals and the faster the players undercut him, the easier the campaign will get. And if the players don't stop him in time, if they clear out one room or fight one combat per week, well, they lose the campaign. If the bad guy gets to progress unimpeded because their players can't make decisions, they hedge too much in fights, they never expand resources, then they lose, and you kill off what is basically a dying campaign anyways. You don't have to worry about it. It lasts until the end of time or until, you know, you pull the plug on it. Finally, the campaign will just end. And y'all can decide whether or not you want to restart the campaign or want to do it with different players. So next up is multiple characters. The use of time jail, like we talked about earlier, preserves the incentive to make and use multiple characters. Which I'm now convinced is basically required for a healthy tabletop RPG experience, especially when it comes to older games. Your players probably won't make multiple characters unless their main man is inaccessible. It can be inconvenient to not have your favorite character on hand, we all get attached to whatever we've invested the most time in. But the trade-off offers you new mechanics, new modes of play, new party compositions. It's a tiny inconvenience to expand your range of experiences at the table. Last up on our list of benefits for one-to-one -one time in smaller groups is bigger rosters. One-to-one -one time offers up the opportunity to not have a smaller group. Let's make up a hypothetical example here. Let's say that your party's characters have been rendered inaccessible for about two weeks. Two folks decide this is their chance to take a break for a week. But you have two other potential players who never got to join the main group. You play in the intervening week, everyone has a great time, and they decide they want to come back for more. You repeat this process once or twice, and you have a second playgroup. You have enough people for a second group of characters, or a second group, a second session time. You can play more than once per week. All this makes one-to-one -one time an engine to produce a larger rosters of players and characters. It doesn't matter if you think one-to-one -one time is a poor fit for smaller campaigns, because it produces a larger campaign. 